Oh, you know how to get the best out of people, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right, thank you. I'm all right. Middle of a tour. You know, I work a bit in Dubai and I do all my planning and the other bits and pieces apart from the stand-up stuff in Dubai. So it's nice to come back to, to England and see some rain. <laughs> What's life like over there? I know nothing about it other than there's very tall buildings and it's the place to be right now. Well, it's an Islamic country, first of all, and I think the more people that spend time in an Islamic country won't be so frightened of Islam and Muslim uh, people while they're here. Uh, it's quite interesting, really. Being an ethnic minority in someone else's country is quite an eye-opener, really. And I think that all of us could learn a lesson from the... Uh, from the UAE people, the, the Arabs, if you like, because the, there's only 10% of them or 15% of them in, in their own country. And everyone gets on really well. It's quite refreshing, even when I'm there, you know, st stirring up all these jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what's interesting for me. I first interviewed you about 10 years ago when what you said on stage was outrageous and controversial mm. and it was racist and offensive. Mm. Now it's a legitimate debate and politicians are talking about it. It's interesting how time moves on, isn't it? I never really thought it as racist and offensive 10 years ago. I know you described it at that and... and if that's the way it come over, then I apologise for anyone I upset. But I've always tried to stick to, and all comedians worth their, any, worth their salt would, would not try and alienate their audience and the public. Everyone wants to be liked. So why would you alienate you know, you know, two thirds of, of, of Britain that don't think along like a racist bigot? I just think that bigotry in any forms is funny. I think the real left left wing bigots are as funny as the right wing bigots. And there's a place where they meet in the middle called Common Sense. And I talk about a lot of that now on the, on the DVD. Um, I actually take on politically correctness and, and say, well, look, let's, let's take a look at this really ridiculous phenomena. Who does it, who, who, who benefits for it? Who loses? Normally me loses because I say the wrong thing and get called the Antichrist and the racist and the sexist and the everything is in the world. So I'm going to have a look at politically correctness because we've had enough of it now. I think we're all, all Brits. We're not black Brits or white Brits. You see, I don't think you are a racist, and I've never thought that, and I've never said you are, and I've always supported you and promoted your DVDs and stuff, yep. because I think there's always been a legitimate debate, but we've never before now been able to have it. Yeah, no one took it on. I spoke to Jonathan Ross. Oh, God, I won't speak to him again, actually. But um, <laughs> well, you don't speak to him, do you? You listen to him. And he accused me of being a, a racist, well, a wastist, actually, to, to, to poke fun at You couldn't wish a speech impediment on a nicer bloke, could you? <laughs> I, I spoke to Jonathan Ross about this whole issue and he said, you, you mustn't go there at all. And I said, well, most of my jokes are laughing at racists. They're ridiculing racists as opposed to, you know, they were not laughing or condoning racism, but they won't get it. They're just as bigoted as they accuse me of being. And there's only two jokes on the, uh, on the DVD. That's it, two. But the, the most is, is just comment. The rest is just me commenting, normally about how I put my foot in it. Are all comedians rebels? Do you actually like it when people start having a go at you? Because it gives you something to fight back at and put something more in your show. Well, some are. Alexi Sale would probably be a bit like that. And Ben Elton causes... Uh, so I, I, I'm probably working more like Ben Elton now than, than I ever did. And I think that's a, that's a, a good thing in a way because there is a point to me now. There wasn't before. I'd just go on and do jokes about anybody. But there is a point to what I'm saying now. Whether you like it or not, I think my act is now changed more to, to what y your lefty comics, as I would call them, like Alexi Sale and everybody, uh, would, would prefer to see. Although, I don't know about that. The, who's that fat woman, ugly, what's her name? Joe Brand. That's it, yeah. Joe. <laughs> she hates me. I tell you who else hates me, Alexi Sale. And I, 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 I met him after he did all this stuff about how awful I was. And I went up to him, he was sitting in the ivy, of course, like a good socialist. <laughs> and I went up and said, hello. And he went, oh yeah, okay, that's good of you to come over, hello. And that was it. My audience were, were of all different ages and they've grown up with me, where Alexi's audience were in telly. You don't need to be that bright, really, to listen to me. You just need to relax and have a good old laugh and let me take you on a trip. Uh, but Alexi's audience, they, they grow older and their values change. I mean, Alexi always stuck to the one value. Uh, and he had much more of a point to what he was saying than I have, really. Mine's a bit tongue-in-cheek. Although I have to say it's not as much as it used to be. You stop touring when you stop getting audiences. That's as simple as that. It's not because you don't want to, because touring's great fun. Some people are fashionable and some aren't, aren't they? McFly, they're not going to be around as long as the Beatles, are they? Me, I'll stick around as long as people come to see me. And I always try and take them on a journey they're not quite comfortable with in the audience. I say, OK, come with me and I'm going to tell you some things now that you don't really want to hear. So, you know, let's laugh at them things. 
The last time I spoke to you, one of the things I admire about you is how you have that ability to do the serious pantomimes where you're just aiming at kids and then you mm. do your adult show where you're mm. effing and blinding and you can yeah. say exactly what you like. Yeah. It, it kind of disproves the idea that Jim Davidson's thick and just aiming at Mogadons, really, which is <laughs> what some newspapers would like to portray. Yeah, I, that sounds quite good. That. I quite like that. No, I can vary, uh, I can vary about a little bit. Uh, I like to do children's stuff in pantomime because I don't have to swear and be filthy. If I was to change my job now, I'd like to be, I don't know, maybe in government, a liaison officer in charge of, you know, immigration issues or something like that, and, or, or to be, to work within the Sikh community or the Muslim community, which I love and adore. I love all that stuff. I find it fascinating, but people wouldn't think that, you see. Apart from the Sikhs and the, and the Muslims, you'd think, oh yeah, Jimbo's all right. Do you think immigration is the biggest thing at the moment in the UK that people are worried about? Because it seems to me it gets more headlines, it gets more news time than anything else that we're talking about at the moment. It's all based around fear, isn't it? Ladies wear the veil. You know, a Muslim lady chooses to wear the veil and she'll have three people speaking on her behalf. But the bottom line is a Muslim lady decides to cover up because that's her faith and that's what she believes. You've got to realise that around the world the mosques are full and other churches are empty. So let's not, you know, paddle up upstream all the time. Um, but we're all just frightened. People, we're all not the best educated people in the world, are we, the old Brits? <laughs> there are a few, I'm sure. That you speak listening. for yourself. No, well, I'm not, I'm not that clever because we don't know how it works. We don't know how it works. We, we think we know a bit about politics, but we know absolutely nothing. And we have a comment to make about it. And the newspapers don't care. They just want to fill their papers. It's interesting. I mean, things that annoy me are things like when I go to my local fair, we can't have candy floss on a stick anymore. We can't Why? have because the stick might stick in your eye and therefore it's banned under European law. Now it has to be in a bag. <sighs> OK. My local council's banned hanging baskets because one fell off once and hit somebody on the head and now they're not putting any up in case one falls off again and hits somebody else. In the end, are we all just going to live in this bubble, do you think? Well, that's the way it's going in this country, but we have a democracy. We can vote these people out. We can vote not to be in Europe if you're really fed up with that. I don't know enough about whether we should be in Europe, but I'm a Brit and typically Brits, you know, we're an island warrior race, if you like. We don't want to be part of Europe. You know, we'd like to be on our own. We think we're better than Europe. The fact is we're not. You drive through France, a country that I slag off regularly. It's wonderful. It's beautiful, lovely cafes, no binge drinking and fighting. But there again, all these politicians say, well, you know, you shouldn't binge drink. Yeah, well, you swap your life, politician, for our life. I mean, not me, I'm pretty privileged. But Mr. Nine Till Five, 23 year old bloke, he, can't, he wants to go out, have, pull a bird. What's he going to do? His life's a misery. His money's run out by Tuesday. He's got to borrow so he can go out on the Thursday before he gets paid on the Friday. Let him binge drink. Good luck to him and eat pies and get fat. He's another planet. <laughs> Jamie Oliver, an irritating git, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> he should eat a few pies, that boy. <laughs> Talking to which, I've just met you in the kitchen here at the theatre and you're cooking dinner for everyone? Yeah, well, yeah, there's five of us and we decided that the ho most of the hotels in this country are rubbish. <laughs> and or uh, well, the ones we can afford to stay in anyway are rubbish. And of course, um, we're travelling during lunch times. So we get up and try and eat breakfast in the hotel, which is between normally between nine and ten past nine, and then you've and it's all horrible and left out to dry and go horrid, isn't it? Yuck! And so then there's either motorway services, and you, then you don't you can't eat before the show because you need you need an empty tongue to really go and get it, and then afterwards the, the, all the restaurants are shut apart from the dear old Indians and uh, the Chinese, and so you get fat. So what we decided to do is try and get up and eat breakfast, journey to the next gig, do the sound check, and then have food and bring in the caterers. And they said, but hang on, Jim, you cook. So Steve sets up the kitchen and I cook for him. We're having toad in the hole today with Cumberland sausages, <laughs> baked beans and potatoes. Although Flo, the security bloke, has cut the potatoes up too small, right? So we're gonna have to mash them. <laughs> You're really millennium man, aren't you? I mean, you're moving forward, and I mean, this is fantastic. You're cooking for people. Yeah. This is a new Jim Davidson, isn't it, really? It's an old Jim Davidson, mate. <laughs> I'd have had caterers before I wasted all my money. You don't get that now when bankruptcy is looming over your head. Well, it has loomed and gone. Are you all right, by the way, with that? I mean, I saw you on this morning the other week talking about it. You seem very open, and that's what I love about you as well. Nothing phases you, does it? Well, I owed the tax man a lot of money after I got divorced from Tracy, uh, and the truth of it is I had a £600,000 tax bill, and I had £600,000 to pay that tax bill tracy said i found a house around the corner if you buy me that one i won't make you sell your house right so mr taxman's bill got diverted of course then another tax bill turned up which made it 
1.2 million, then I had to pay tax on all the money that I gave Mrs. Davidson the ex. When you do these settlements, it ain't tax free, you know. You gotta pay your tax on it. So that was that, it was about two point something million and I paid most of it off, got it down to 800,000 pounds and I said, look, I can't pay you this anymore. You know, Since the, I left the BBC, speech marks, brackets, ha ha, of course I did. Um, I don't get the money that I used to. And they said, well, we think you're fiddling. We think you own all this stuff in Dubai and this and that, and whatever. Um, we want that, all that money now, which was 800 grand, or we're gonna make you bankrupt. So they did, I had no choice really. So now I'm not allowed to sell my house either. Having all that, and I've paid 15 million pound tax since I started. I mean, that's not fair, is it? I mean, it, it no, the rules are the rules, so it's pretty fair. You see, credit card people will encourage you. You've only got to watch them in the adverts in between. Are you skint? Are you fed up? Would you want all your manageable bills in one? Oh, it just gets you more in it. Suddenly we're a gadget society and there's always, I want it, I want it now. Everyone's got a DVD player. Everyone's got satellite. Most people have got two cars in their household and you go in debt to get them and suddenly you can't pay it back. I haven't had a credit card for, well, since before the bankruptcy thing. And I think it's great. When you go in a hotel and they say, can I take a swipe of your credit card? No. Why? I haven't got one. <laughs> Come on, sir, you have. No, I haven't. Well, you won't be able to order any drinks. Well, okay. <laughs> What do you have to do then? Leave a kidney at reception or something? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the promoter pays for my, my, my hotel thing and the bill has to get sent off, but I have to give them a swipe of my credit card or I can't put anything to my bill. That's one of the things I miss when I'm away. I miss Rick Stein's programme. And, and uh, Rick Stein makes me miss England. The way he looks at England is the way I look at it, really. We, don't, we can't all look at it like that. That's my choice, to be Rick Stein's mate and just hang around with him. I think that would be fa fabulous. But of course, England isn't like that. England is a dangerous place, I think, now. Dangerous. You'll never come back? Never say never again. I might have to come back. You never know. Anything can happen. It's my home, but it's dangerous. I'd like to see David Cameron as Prime Minister. I'd love to see William Hague as Home Secretary or Foreign Secretary. I can't wait for a Conservative government to take over. I quite like the Prime Minister. I think you're doing well under pressure. I don't believe our troops should be in Iraq. Uh, I think they're going to struggle in Afghanistan unless they get the tools to do the job. And I don't like being the puppet of the of American policy. Regardless of whether you feel they should be there or not be there, you'll always go and support them. It doesn't matter. I'll always support them. I never have a political issue. Never. And the troops don't like it if you go on and start to slag the Prime Minister off. Prime Minister's their chief, you know. Listen, good luck with everything. Good luck with the DVD, which is in your stores now. And uh, you've got Panto and you're touring again next year as well. Yes. And you're enjoying it. I mean, you seem happier than ever. Everybody around you tells me that you're funnier than ever. You're happier than ever. You seem to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty comfortable. I had a big worry with all that financial stuff. I've decided not to worry now. Life is, is far too short. And, and the act I'm doing really has a point to it now. I'm talking about politically correctness, which we've all had enough of. So there you go. Yeah, I think it's the best DVD I've ever done. Jim Davis, it's always nice to talk to you and good luck with the show tonight and thanks very much for talking to us. Right, I better go and get me beans on. <laughs>